Hey guys, welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video, we'll show you the basics of the various selection tools and features available to you in Adobe Illustrator. So download the free template file for this lesson from the description below, and I'll pass you over to Rory now, who will take you through the process. Thanks Ross. So jumping straight into our template file here, we have a few very simple designs set up that we're going to use to demonstrate each of the ways we can select objects in Illustrator. So starting with the most basic and the ones you'll probably be pretty familiar with already if you've used the software, the two main selection tools over on the left hand side are the normal selection tool which is V on the keyboard and we also have the direct selection tool which is A on the keyboard. So starting with just the normal selection tool, I can basically select any objects. As you can see here, we have a group of objects. So these are all grouped together. So if I click and drag, they're all going to move with one another. If I want to go and move objects within a group, I have to double click into them. So I can move this star individually of the circles as well. But I'm just going to press Command Z a few times and I'll double click out of this group. Another thing we can do with this and a few of the other selection tools is if I double click on the tool itself, you can see we get a dialog box popping up and we actually can be quite precise with where we move these objects. So we can actually enter specific pixel values in this case and we can also rotate it around a point as well. I'm going to hit cancel though and we're going to jump over to the direct selection tool. With nothing selected I am actually able to click and drag on objects. If I click within the center of the object I can move them around independently despite them being in a group. However if I click on the edge or an anchor point of an object Object, you can see we start to move it and this is because we use the direct selection tool to move individual anchor points and paths around so for example I can take any points on this star shape here I can also select multiple anchor points at once they don't have to be sitting next to one another so I can click and drag over one and holding shift I can select others so I can really select as many as I want and I can select them from multiple shapes as well you also notice on the selected anchor points that are corners we get the these small circles appearing and these are live corner widgets so if I click and drag them that's going to round off the corner and we have a few more options with them but we're not going to go into detail on that in this video so I'm just going to press command Z a few more times again if I double click on the direct selection tool we get the same move dialog box however in this case we can actually apply this to individual anchor points if we want to but in this case I'm just going to leave this so before moving on to the next tool I'm going to go back to our selection tool here and I'm going to double click into this group again as the next thing I'm going to show you may select other objects on the artboard. However, I can select an object and we have an option up in our control panel to select similar objects. Now, if you don't have this control panel, you can get it by going to window and control. But what this allows us to do is select objects with similar properties. Now, if I just click this once, it's going to select this other circle on the other side of the star here. You can see if I move them about, they are both selected. And that's because they have the exact same properties. So they both have a stroke of nine point with this blue color and no fill. However, if I unselect that, I'll select this circle again. And if I click the arrow to the right of this option, you can see we get some more parameters to choose from. So we can specify the properties that are going to come into play when we use this option. So for example, I could just select stroke color and that's going to select all of these objects because they all have a stroke with that color. So it's not worrying about the fill color or the stroke weight. So we have plenty of control with this. So if I select this circle at the bottom, again, I can click this drop down arrow and we could select fill and stroke color, for example, and that's going to select the star that has the same properties as the circle as well. Now there's another option for doing a similar thing here. If I select one of the other circles here, I'm going to go up to select in the top menu and down here we have an option that says same and again we have a few more parameters within here so this is doing a similar thing although you can see we also get things like blending mode in here but for example I will just select fill color and that's going to select all of the objects with the same fill color so we're getting the same type of functionality from this as well I'm just going to double click out of this group now and we're going to move on to our next example now just before I move on to the next tool with my selection tool I'm just going to show you that we have a series of grouped objects 
objects making up this design. So as you can see, all of this is grouped together right now. However, if I zoom in a touch and if I just double click onto one of these leaves, you can see we have another group which just consists of this left hand side. I can double click again and we've got just the leaves. Double clicking one more time, we're just getting a pair of leaves and we have a few more groups. We get a single leaf and then within this last group, we've got just the leaf colors itself. So this happens a lot in design where we create groups within groups to put together designs that are slightly more complex like this. And this is where we can use the group selection tool. So if I click and hold over our direct selection tool, it can be found under here. And this works slightly differently from the other selection tools. So again, I can simply click on an object. However, despite this being in a group, we are only selecting the object itself that we've clicked on. So if I click and drag, this is going to move. If I click over one of the anchor points or paths, nothing's going to happen. It's just going to move the object as a whole. Where this can be useful though, is if I click on this object again, it's going to select the next group that it lies within. So now I have the whole leaf here. Again, I can keep doing this. If I click once more, we've got the full leaf and I can basically keep clicking until we get the full group selected. So this is quite a good way of selecting individual objects or groups within groups and saves us having to double click into each group with the normal selection tool. So moving on to the next example, we have a design here set up with a few different colors. Again, this is all grouped together and I'm just going to double click into this group just so that we're not selecting any other objects on the artboard. But the next tool is the magic wand tool. Now, before I start, using the magic wand tool, I'm just going to show you that all of this is ungrouped within this grouping. So each of these shapes are separate from one another. But with the magic wand tool, we can select objects that contain the same properties as well. So similar to the select similar objects shortcut in our control panel. If I click on this blue shape, for example, we're going to get all of these blue objects within this group. However, one thing you need to be careful of is the tolerance of it. So what I mean by that is if I grab my magic wand tool again and select one of the objects making up this seven here, you can see we're now getting more objects selected that have different colors. So this is to do with the tolerance setting of the tool and I can adjust that by double clicking on it. And you can see at the moment this is set to fill color. So again, we can be specific with what parameters it's looking to match with other objects. So in this case, it's set to fill color and we have a tolerance of 32. If I take this right down to a tolerance of two, however, and with my magic wand still selected, I'll click the seven again. And with my selection tool now, if I move this away, you can see it's only selecting the colors that make up the seven. So it's worth noting that this may select other objects with differing properties depending on the tolerance value we have set within here. Moving on to the last example though, if I double click out of that group, we have a very simple set of polygons here. And the last tool we're looking at is the lasso tool. So quite a lot of the time you may be working with designs where you have objects sitting within other objects, for example. And if you want to make specific tweaks to anchor points within those objects, it can be a little bit tricky. For example, if I grab my direct selection tool and I want to select a bunch of these anchor points, I'd basically have to do it one by one. I can't just click and drag over, otherwise that's just going to move the object from in behind. So what the lasso tool allows us to do is click and drag a selection over a number of anchor points and it's only going to select those anchor points. So for example, I will just click and drag through some of these polygons to select a series of anchor points. So as you can see, they're all highlighted blue. I could just remove them from my control panel and I'm not affecting the red polygon in behind in any way. So this can also be a very useful tool in certain scenarios. And that really sums up all of the selection tools in Adobe Illustrator. So as Rory's demonstrated, the various selection tools within Adobe Illustrator allow us plenty of flexibility and precision when moving, scaling, or editing objects. If you have any questions, then drop a comment down below and we'll do our best to help. And if you want to learn more about graphic design, we've created a free one hour training where you'll discover the top five secrets of successful designers, which saves you the hassle of having to figure it all out for yourself. We'll be showing you how to immerse yourself in the sector you're designing for, creative thinking and how to spark creativity, what good composition is and how you can achieve it in your designs, 
how to pick the right colors for your designs and how to pick the right typefaces for your projects. So if you are serious about leveling up your design skills, then make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. Space is limited and these events always fill up fast because they're significantly better than the information others charge you and ours is free. The link is in the description. You're not going to want to miss it. I'll see you there.